नमस्ते वेलकम टू द न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ सह यात्रा संवाद आई एम सृष्टि काफले द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स स्टेट पार्टनरशिप प्रोग्राम हैज रेज्ड अ फ्रेश कंट्रोवर्सी इन नेपाल इट हैज आल्सो एक्सपोज्ड फेलियर्स इन नेपाल गवर्नमेंट साइड पर्टिकुलरली इन मिलिट्री डिप्लोमेसी For now its chapter has been closed as the government has decided not to sign up for this program but what next to discuss more on this today we have invited two guests in our studio we have dr suraj acharya a public policy analyst and a political commentator welcome to the show sir thank you similarly we have dr bal mukund regmi professor at tribhuvan university welcome sir thank you The SPP he received a lot of controversies in Nepal lately. Though the government has already decided not to take forward this program, there are still so many suspicions and doubts. So how do you view this overall journey? Okay, for some times uh, I think there is an overreach on the part of the United States uh, in terms of uh, using Nepal as a leverage. to advance uh, this so called uh, indo pacific strategy and for a super power from us view point it's quite natural things so however uh, given the geopolitical sensitivity and non alignment that is enshrined in nepalese constitutions it was not a, a natural things for nepal and naturally there was a very strong reaction from different section of the society and the government had to reject it but at the same time there were also some unfortunate development on the part of our neighbor china just yesterday there was a formal reactions uh, from the chinese government formally program insights that is also not very much warranted and not fortunate things for nepal so in a way this is a primary signal that if our state and our diplomacy is not smart enough there is a real risk of nepal being a playground of global powers so this i think from the uh, we should learn the lessons for both at a diplomatic level at the strategic level and also at the political level mm. dr regvi what do you think what could be its implications in nepal's foreign policy and geopolitics i think it this way uh, first Nepal has been shaped in terms of foreign policy by Prithvi Narayan Shah. He said to maintain good relationship with both our neighbors because they are asymmetrically big in shape and power. And uh, coming a bit later, we were forced to sign Sugauli Treaty with uh, British India, uh, whereby we were recognized as a nation, as a country, but we also had to concede some of the sometimes uh, to them and later what happened is uh, we had democracy in nepal and when the british were leaving india behind india got independence india then uh, inherited what the british india had signed with us and so in terms of strategy and defense we have unfair treaty existing with india given in this background nepal is still under influence of india and nepal has tried to come out of this frame by non uh, participating non alignment policy and also going to un and those all those things but what happened is in 1990s about 30 years back since the collapse of the soviet union the world became unipolar under the leadership of the usa and so usa started uh, thinking its monopolical way you know monopoly way so it has uh, that time developed what spp this state uh, partnership program whereby it successfully cooperated with three balkan states that came out of soviet union and they were successfully uh absorbing this stairs into the nato so that same experience was working on behalf of america on challenge but in part of nepal in case of nepal china was emerging and india is emerging to big powers for us there we had some laps dr acharya do you think it has exposed nepal's failure to some extent in terms of diplomacy 
Yes, you are right. Uh, given this geopolitical uh, political sensitivity and to our this uh, nearest neighbors emerging as a global power, so we should have been more careful and smart in managing our relations with all uh, is our friends, you say. So here, what uh, our diplomacy and state machinery missed to look at it, of course, we need a very balanced develop, balanced relation uh, with both of our neighbors and also the Western country, including the United States of America. But uh, what we should be very wise is to understand the nature of this relationship. So we need to accommodate, obviously, when we establish a diplomatic relation with any country, they, they will have naturally some strategic interest or diplomatic interest, security interest, different kind of interest. So on our part, we should be smart enough uh, to accommodate the legitimate interest and to reject that illegitimate or that is not this in impractical interest. Mm -hmm. But for some year, what our politician failed is, unfortunately, uh, some politician or even some political party, they consider the international relation as a leverage for the domestic politics to gain the power, either, either it be for a political party or even the individual leaders, to gain a power in the domestic politics uh, they used to have a hobnobbing with the foreign powers or this very untransparent or some, what do you call, this uh, very unscrupulous, I would call it, that this kind of relations with this power country. So it applies with all, you see, that we should now review ourselves that our political parties, it's all are on this, this same page. Some political party want to establish with this our northern neighbors, some are with our southern neighbors, some are with the western neighbor, western friends, and they want to establish a relationship not in the interest of the country, not for that. The purpose is not to, what you call, advance the interest of the Nepal. The purpose is to advance the interest of the individual leaders. So that is the problem. So because of this, we have this very unfortunate situation of, what you call, antagonizing all. The, the, the unfortunately, if we see the current diplomacy, this none of our friends are happy with us. Mm -hmm. These two close neighbors are this, uh, this what you call the Western. Also, um, also there is uh, now a situation where there is like mistrust within the neighbors. There is a lack of confidence. So, uh, how do you think Nepal should minimize this mistrust? Yeah, that is important. Like while defining what you call while defining the interest of all our friends, we should be able to make a distinction between interest of our two neighbors. This the, it's it's not that they are geographically close. So we should be close. It is not that. What we should understand is our two close neighbors, how they look at Nepal is they look at Nepal from their existential, from the lens of existential lens. What happened in Nepal, they consider India and China, they consider as something that has direct bearing to this, their national security. But for the Western friends, this European Union or the United States, they do also have some interest in Nepal. But their interest is not an in existential interest. That might be diplomatic interest, that might be, say, liberal democracy, human rights, or other diplomatic interests. So, our state should be very careful in managing this existential interest and managing other kind of interests. Here we have this mixed up it. So, you are very right. The one of these priority now should be to what you call compensate, what is you call this trust deficit. Yeah. Definitely, there is a, in a, in a recent time, there is a trust deficit among both of our neighbors. That so we need to have a, some fresh start in terms of defining our this fundamental our non-alignment. What we say we say the non-alignment our foreign policy. But in the recent year we have a knowingly or unknowingly this departure from the we have the very if we look at the different events it's not incompatible with this non-alignment. So we need to have a course correction and thereby. We need to re-establish the trust 
among these two immediate neighbor that should be our first priority then also we need to establish the trust with the western our friends also that is equally important also so dr egmi do you want to add anything do you think uh, that nepal's domestic and uh, foreign affairs should be independently uh, decided on the basis of public opinion when it comes to the big projects or big programs like uh, spp Uh, there certainly i agree uh, partly what uh, with what you say mm. uh, first we are making some mistake that is a country as such should not be decided by one party policy in foreign relations we have to sit down together all the parties and concerned stakeholders in our country and make a certain policy that uh, brings the maximum benefit to nepal that is first point then second point having decided our uh, major policies we have to communicate clearly with our neighbors because in foreign relations in case of nepal i say 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus many two are china and india these are the most vital ones for our existence then one is the united states that is the major power another one is the un and then come other countries so if we don't go that way we cannot uh, cope up with so many problems and so many issues and we still bring the benefits to nepal so uh, there is no such uh, thing that that we have uh, irritated or uh, we have damaged the relation with india or china we have not done so as such but many times they are sensitive we nepal have to take their concerns into consideration when deciding or when ma making major shift in our policies but they also don't need uh, to guide us so these are two different things whatever we are doing like you see we accepted bri and we accepted mcc that was because it, it these were economic cooperation issues and we decided to accept we uh we drew we drew, we drew from uh, this uh, spp because it was a strategic uh, partnership issue and it was not in our benefit or in long term it could have harmed nepal's national interest so now coming forward uh, what do you think uh, how should government handle such important or such sensitive programs in the days ahead what is your su suggestion okay to picking up this this last question you raised look the foreign policy and foreign relation is not something that should be shaped by the public opinion mm. we cannot have a luxury every time that mm. so this time yes government this ministers even the prime minister the government machinery in a very untransparent way we know it, even the some past military leadership so they were very irresponsible way trying to advance this so called spc agenda but there was a would you call this very timely and very strong reactions in the term of the public opinion and there was a course correction this time it worked but we cannot expect that every time the public opinion will make a course correction it may not it should not happen that way because this foreign and diplomacy it should be done in a very very careful very silent manners and very responsible way so i agree with this professor radmi that it's not a something to be decided by one ministers government leaders or that the foreign policy should be what do you call this uh, decided foreign policy issue should be decided by the national consensus this party in the government party in the opposition civil society media intellectual that should be based on the collective wisdom and we have done this because you see not every country the foreign policy non alignment would be enshrined in the constitution so they should be reminded that its foreign non aligned main foreign policy is a constitutional provision this even not the simple majority of the when the parliament cannot decide it so our leaders should what you call i would like to kindly remind them this fact so from now on uh, what i think is i think our political leadership learn a important lesson uh, from this episode because this is not a very what you call pleasant things uh, for us because united states is very important what you call prince for us this supported in our development endeavor 
supported in our diplomatic endeavors to what you call introduce Nepal in the international forum, even in our UN membership, United States plays a very positive role. So we should be, we should express our gratitude, not by words, but by our conduct. So it's very unfortunate that to drag this issue in a public controversy, uh, and what do you call this uh, rejected. So in the first place, our state should have been careful not to accept it in the first place, rather than taking it to the point of rejection. So I think from now on, looking at what you reviewing is all these pros and cons things. Uh, our state machinery would learn a lesson, and we would have a recalibration. Uh, in terms of this, our the procedures are in vision or in strategic thinking. Mm -hmm. So that need to be done in the state level, diplomatic level, operational level, bureaucracy, political everything. I think our people will collectively learn a lesson. So, Dr. Rigmi, what should be uh, the leadership mindful of while dealing with such important projects in the future, be it from any country? Actually, myself and Dr. Azaria have already described, mm -hmm. uh, included its answer. Uh, but to make more specific, in the foreign relations policy, foreign policy, we have to have uh, one dual policy. That is, we have only one spokesman, you know, like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It is not that everybody talks about international relations, and every time we uh, meet uh, a foreigner and we speak about our relation with them, Party, partisan, uh, uh, you know, views or personal views. This has to be stopped. First point. Second, we have uh, our parliament, and there we have international relations committee. That so that should also be activated and should work in close cooperation with Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And then comes uh, to people like you know us, the media, the think tanks. Uh, professors who not. So they have also to know the limit, where to speak, where not to speak. Sometimes I'm, maybe I'm, I think I'm sharing my idea, but it might be, uh, you know, giving the information, passing on the information that should not have been passed to outsiders. So these things have to come uh, to be included if we want to make our foreign policy uh, relatively successful and, um, and face no accident. Otherwise, uh, it can lead to accidents, you know. Un un uh, unintentional accidents have taken place many times. It should be stopped. Mm, do you like to add anything on this? Yes. Well, in this context, there, there is one article. I would call it, it's unwanted and potentially risky narratives usually built on the part of the media, opinion builders and the intellectual and some suction in this government machinery also. That narrative is look, the Nepal we are a small country, developing country and we have two giant neighbors and often these giant neighbors they have a, they try to micromanage and have interventions and sometimes humiliate us. So that is why to discipline them, why not to invite a third powerful power? more powerful than that, so that we'll be more respectful and this, our new neighbor are the more powerful, let's say it's a, in particularly the Western power, that they would be helpful to discipline our, these two big neighbors and make us more respectful. That is not a very wise thing to do. We should be very careful and in the recent year, I see very responsible intellectuals, the section of the media and in the, our diplomatic cycle. So, what I see very interesting is, this narrative is built on a very, very superficial understanding. This is no way rational things from this basic, what you call, this basic premise of international relation, basic principles of the international relation. Look, in the international relation, there is no such thing as a love and friendship. There is a only interest, interest and interest. So if we unwisely invite a bigger power in the name of disciplining our two neighbors, we'll be in a very, very difficult situation. And perhaps once we invite it, and once we generate this vicious cycle, it will be pretty difficult to come out of this trap. 
So anyway, this is my opinion, but what I would like to call all our responsible political parties, leaders, diplomats, intellectuals, at least let's debate it, whether it's a wise thing to do or not. Mm -hmm. But what do you call it? It's unfortunately, this narrative is in the, in this, uh, what you call it, recent years, very carefully and very unscrupulously, it's being planted in our Nepali psyche. If we have a problem with our immediate neighbors, we should be able to manage by ourselves. So we need to negotiate with them. We need to develop a trust among them. So that is how it should be, rather than invite a third party to manage our two big neighbors. Thank you. Thank you so much for that insights and valuable opinions. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you, Srishti, for giving this opportunity to put some of uh, our views to the audience. Thank you. That's all for today's episode of Sahayatra Sambad. We will catch you in the next episode. Namaste.